Andre, as we begin to speculate about what the far future of the universe is, there's traditionally two approaches, the so-called freeze as everything begins to expand or the fire as everything begins to contract. And for a long time, it depended on how much matter there was because well, sufficient matter, enough mm -hmm. gravitation to contract. But recently, we, we've seen an acceleration of the expansion, which seems to indicate that it's flying apart so fast that eventually it will just scatter into nothingness. How, how, how do you see the far future? Well, um, I must say that our own understanding of the laws uh, describing the universe changed so dramatically during the last uh, 20 years mm. uh, that one may also expect that maybe in the next 10 they will change also and then we'll come with different answers. <laughs> Something very important happened uh, relatively recently when we found how uh, it is possible to explain the total number of dimensions of our space in string theory. Uh, string theory tries to uh, live in 10 dimensional space or anyway in the uh, space with larger number of dimensions. And the way how to explain why we see only four is that uh, the extra dimensions they are squeezed so densely and we need to find some mechanism which keeps them squeezed because otherwise our universe would be this multi-dimensional, ten-dimensional, whatever. Okay, so we live in four-dimensional space-time, so three-dimensional space, one time. And so what was found that it is possible to stabilize these internal dimensions and it is possible to explain acceleration of the universe, which was, well, found uh, relatively recently. It was possible to explain it in string theory, but only temporarily. This state in which we are living right now, it is so-called metastable state. Metastable state is a state which is necessarily going to decay later. Uh, so that means this phase that we're in, where the yeah. expansion of the universe is actually accelerating, potentially is, is caused unstable. by something that's unstable. Yeah, it is unstable, but when I, when, I, when, I, when I say unstable, when we make an estimate for how unstable mm -hmm. is unstable, well, typically it will die within 10 to the degree, 10 to the degree, 120 oh, oh, years. Oh. <laughs> so don't worry about that. We'll be able to finish this program. <laughs> Well, at least in the recent models, which we are right now like, okay? But what was a new thing which we didn't expect? We didn't expect that when it decays, there are two different ways for it decaying. Um, one way, it may decay such, in such a way as these external dimensions at this time during the decay decompactify. They become big. So all dimensions... Decompactify, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the compacting yeah, 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 yeah. goes yeah. the opposite right. way. So, you see, uh, right now we have three big space dimensions, right. time, and everything else is small. Right. So small that we cannot move in these directions. Right. And then suddenly, near us, these other dimensions just, well, open. Blossom okay? like a flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would be very happy, except for you will be very dead. <laughs> because all laws of physics at this moment change completely, and you will find yourself in 10-dimensional space-time, or in any other uh, space-time with higher dimensionality. And physics of our type is impossible there. Atoms can exist only in three-dimensional space-time. Uh, sorry, in four-dimensional space-time, three-dimensional space. Planetary systems can exist only in three-dimensional space. So all our structures which surround us will be demolished at this moment. You will be waiting, flying at the satellite, measuring when it happens. But you see the point of that, when it happens, it happens as a creation of a bubble, and the wall of the bubble comes to you and this moves towards you with the speed of light. And inside the bubble, there is this 10-dimensional space-time. So when this bubble catches you, at this moment, you see it for the first time. And then you do not have any chance to report it. So with all our experimental evidence, we will never report the observation of this 10-dimensional space-time because we will be dead at the moment when it hits us. But then this is not the only way. Another way is that we can tunnel to a state where vacuum energy is negative. And this will be four-dimensional space-time. Oh. So our lovely space-time 
but with negative vacuum energy. And in this case, the universe rapidly collapses. Okay, because right now the, yeah. the, the energy is, is, positive. is positive, which yes. pushes the universe out right. on an accelerating basis, right. yeah. and seemingly forever. Yeah. But that can reverse. That's another yes. way that things can Good. change. So you have then two choices, and you choose which one. Either you did in empty 10-dimensional space, okay, which will be cold and nasty and not hospital, or you uh, die in the collapsing four-dimensional universe. You're full of good news. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there is one piece of good news. Yeah. One piece of the good news is that the universe never disappears the whole of it. Uh. There will be always some part of it which will continue expanding because of eternal inflation. And they will continue reproducing new parts of the universe where new reporters will <laughs> discuss the same subject and talk about the possible end of the world, and this will continue over and over again. So the universe as a whole will never disappear. Life as a whole will never disappear. As for you and me, well, you know that prognosis is not so positive even for the next 50 years. 